Okay, you can turn in your Bible to Psalm 124 today. And we begin our study in verse 6. Let's begin reading in verse 1. Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 124, verse 1. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then would they have swallowed us up alive when their wrath was kindled against us. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our soul. Then the proud waters would have gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. God commands his church to love her enemies not to fight them or kill them before they hurt her and normally a command like that would leave God's people defenseless but it's not a problem at least not long term because God does not give us as prey to their teeth in other words he defends us as we are good to those who hate us. Our job is to be good. Our job is to be kind. God's job is to defend. Verse 7. Our soul has escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. In other words, sometimes it's a close call for God's people. At least it seems like it to us. God may let trouble go on for a long time, but never too long. When it gets to the point where it can do some real spiritual damage, he steps in and stops it. He rescues us like a bird that has been caught in the trap and is about to have its head chopped off. God is always there. To us, often it seems like in the nick of time. Verse 8, Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And that's why the church survives and that's why individual Christians can't lose if they don't quit. The God who keeps us is the powerful almighty God who created everything. No wonder those who have sworn to wipe out the church always eventually die after failing in their efforts. Let's go to Psalm 125. They, ha they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. In other words, trusting in God through Jesus Christ will make us strong. Faith in God can sometimes be mistaken for stubbornness, but it's not the same thing. It is not stubbornness. Stubbornness has to do with selfishness. This is not stubbornness, it is steadfastness. If we trust in God through Jesus Christ, then we will be strong. We may not like everything that happens to us, but nothing will cause us to fall to pieces. Nothing will destroy us spiritually, and nothing will cause us to sin as long as we continue to trust God. Verse 2, as the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. God is round about his people. Our God is our guard. He always encircles those of us who belong to him through Jesus Christ. And of course that doesn't mean he keeps us from exercising our free will because he doesn't. He allows us to do what we want to do, and yet he never stops watching over us. When we do wrong, he is there to teach us lessons. When we do right, when we love him and obey him, then he protects us from anything that would hurt us spiritually. Verse 3. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the allotment of the righteous, lest 
the righteous put forth their hands to do iniquity. In other words, God never gives his people more than what they are able to handle by his grace. God does not allow persecution to go beyond the point where we can no longer choose faithfulness. He does not allow trouble and suffering to be greater than the grace that can keep us faithful to him through it. Let's look at verse 4. Do good, O Lord, unto those that are good and to them that are upright in their hearts. Be good to good people, God. And God does bless the good. If not materially, then certainly spiritually. You say, well, that leaves me out because I'm not good. I'm certainly not good like I want to be good. Well, don't be too quick to count yourself out. No one is good all the time. That's why it's nice that he also added to those whose hearts are right. People who have a heart for God want to do good, which is why more often than not, they do do good. But even when they fail, they quickly confess and get back on track. Those are the kind of people that God can bless. Those are the kind of people that God can bless the best. Verse 5. As for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them away with the workers of iniquity, but peace shall be upon Israel. Those who turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them away with the workers of iniquity. Those who know what is right and turn away from what is right are the ones who are in view here in verse 5. Those who know the right way but turn aside to follow the wrong way will be led away with the evildoers, says God. And the reason they will be led away with the evildoers is because that is what they are as well. They are evildoers. Actually, they are worse than the average run-of-the-mill evildoer because they have the truth. They know the truth, but they willfully turn their back on it. Let's go to Psalm 126. When the Lord returned the captives to Zion, we were like them that dream. In other words, it seemed too good to be true. When God sent his people into exile to Babylon for 70 years because of their wickedness. It was very rough on God's people. And when God brought them back, it seemed like it was way too good to be true. They were actually back again. A lot of things that God does seem too good to be true. They're just normal things for God. But they cause our little finite minds to draw a blank. I wonder if when we are in heaven, I wonder if when we are in heaven we will say, well, it's just too good to be true. We may say that, especially when we first arrive. But of course it will be true. Whether we can believe it or not, it doesn't matter. It's still going to be true. We'll just have to get used to it. Two. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. When God brought Israel back from captivity, back to their own land, they were filled with joy, and they were filled with laughter. What they had previously taken for granted, and even despised by not appreciating it, they really appreciated after losing it and then getting it back. And so they laughed and they sang when God restored what they lost through sin. Sometimes people do not fully appreciate what they have until they lose it for a while. 
Verse 3, The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Well, everything God does for us is great. It's just that people often un, often start taking for granted so much that God does on a routine basis. And, and we don't think of it as great, but it is. The Lord does great things for all of us all the time. We are breathing. Our heart is beating. Our eyes are seeing. Our ears are hearing. We can walk. We can use our hands. And we can think. All these things are great things that God does for us continually. And it's easy to take them for granted and not think of them as great things, but they are. Look at verse 3 again. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. The Israelites recognized that God bringing them back into their land was a great thing. They didn't take that for granted. They realized that it was a great thing because they knew that they were helpless to make that happen themselves. Sometimes God has to let his people get backed into a corner with no way out so that he can come through for them and remind them once again that he is their provider and their helper and that he does great things for them. Sometimes we have to go b through bad times, I guess, to help us appreciate God and not take him for granted. Four, turn back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. The Jews in captivity did not all return at the same time and they did not all return with the same leaders either. But the ones who had returned are here praying for those who had not yet returned. They wanted everyone to be together like it used to be in the good old days. Five, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. In other words, may those who have been sad be happy. They left the country sorrowful because of their sin, but they returned happy after they repented. Trouble often produces Christian virtues in believers who aren't quite what they ought to be, and of course, that would be all of us. So you see, sorrows bring about joy through a deeper walk with the Lord for those who remain faithful to God through them. Verse 6, He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. It sometimes takes a while to see the results of righteousness. A person does not plant a garden and then pick from it the next day. And likewise, even though hard work pays, it does, we still have to wait till payday. Doing things that are the correct things will always be worthwhile, even though they may be very hard things to endure. 127. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman walketh but in vain, waketh but in vain. In other words, if God does not add his blessing to whatever it is that we are trying to do, we might as well forget about it. We are wasting our time. If God doesn't build the house, then even the most skilled carpenter will make a mess of the project. If God is not guarding the city, then the police might as well take a nap in their squad cars. In other words, without God's blessing, our skills, our diligence, our training will not amount to anything. This is just another way of God reminding us that we need him. You say, well, I know people who don't even think about God and they are very successful. That's a tribute to God's grace. 
and it's a pity that they don't recognize it because someday they will possibly too late though verse 2 it is vain for you to rise up early to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrows for so he giveth his beloved sleep God commands us to work hard but he also wants us to rest without God's blessing we can work like crazy and not accomplish anything with God's blessing we can work and have success but even then God wants us to take time off even then God wants us to take time for leisure and rest God has not designed us to work night and day seven days a week. Verse 3 Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Children are a reward from God. Children are not for everyone. However, in God's will and if raised in love and holiness they are a great source of joy a great challenge a lot of work but a great source of joy sometimes people take God's good gifts and ruin them and then those gifts become a source of grief instead of joy and sometimes people take God's gift of children and destroy that gift too they destroy it by abusing them or not training them to be godly and then that great gift becomes a source of trouble instead of being a blessing those children become a nightmare for anyone who has has to be around them and that something that God never intended and boy were those parents be held accountable for that for as arrows are in the hand of the mighty man so are children of the youth it is nice to have a bow but the arrows are what make the bow helpful and in the same way a child who is raised the right way in the fear of God and is therefore pleasing to God will be helpful to their parents their parents gave them life and a godly start on the path to heaven and in turn at least in general they will be there to help their parents when they need help five happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them they shall not be ashamed but they shall speak with the enemies at the gate the more arrows you have the better off you are if you are a soldier the more children you have the better off you are if you have raised those children in the fear and the love of God Psalm 128 blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord that walketh in his ways for thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands it says blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord that walketh in his ways and of course we should always serve God because we love him and obeying God is one big way that we show our love for him however having a good healthy fear of God is also good preachers don't do anyone any favors by only talking about God's love because the Bible has an awful lot to say to Christians about fearing the Lord and I know we can't say too much about the love of God it's impossible to overemphasize it however God's hatred of sin and his determination to punish those who will not repent must also be stressed one is just as biblical as the other 
You know, if people do not understand the sin-hating, sin-punishing side of God, well, part of the motivation for being holy will be missing. That's what the Bible says. And when holiness is lacking for any reason, whatever the reason might be, well, joy will be lacking as well. Verse 2. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands, happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. People who work hard deserve their pay, and they should enjoy it. They should enjoy what it can buy them. And for sure, God deserves some of our paycheck, but God also wants us to have a good time in his will whenever possible. God's people do not have to be miserable to be holy. Be holy and allow yourself to be happy whenever possible. 3. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants around about thy table. In other words, this refers to a happy marriage and a nice family. Those things are the result of a steady an obedient walk with God. God blesses the home where people put him first. Maybe he doesn't always bless them with a lot of money, but he will always bless them with a lot of whatever it takes to feel rich on the inside. I would rather not be rich and still feel rich than actually be rich and not feel rich on the inside. What good is that? 4. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. In other words, if we do things God's way, well, then we're going to be blessed the best that we can, given whatever hand we are dealt. See, when we let God drive, things are bound to be better than if we drive. 5. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. He is praying for good times for those who fear the Lord. He's praying for good times for those who would fear the Lord. I would not pray for good times for those who do not fear the Lord. I hate to say it, but maybe they need some bad times so that they will start fearing the Lord. 6. Yea, Thou shalt see thy children's children and peace upon Israel. It's nice to see two or three, sometimes even four generations of a family together enjoying each other. And I know that can be kind of a rare thing, but it certainly isn't impossible. It's possible and is best accomplished when everyone is devoted to God. Devotion to God makes for a close family which also honors God. And we'll pick it up in Psalm 129 next time. Until then, so long, everyone.